Let's go. I'm That's so awesome. glad. I'm so yeah. glad you're doing better. I know. Okay. According to progress. Yes, and here we go. You are being recorded. Yeah. It's yeah. five. It's time for Watch Me Work, where you get to talk with me about your work. Um, and if you don't know how it goes, that's how it goes. We've been doing this uh, show for like 14, 15 years. We started out in the lobby of the public theater. We uh, then went uh, with the help of HowlRound and the public theater. We, we started doing it kind of using technology. And then uh, when COVID and lockdown hit, we went on Zoom. And that's where we are. And that's where we hope to stay. We are now being, what do you call it, embraced by the New Work Development Department. And Amritha and, uh, is the head of the New Work Development Department. Do you want to say anything to everybody? I'm sure. Really I'll just say hello. Hi, everyone. It's really nice to meet you and so thrilled to join Watch Me Work. Yay. Okay. And, and Zoe is the, the da, 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 da. yeah. <laughs> yes, likewise. Hi, everyone. My my name is Zoe. Um, she, her, and I'm very happy to be here and welcome, everyone. Yay. 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 So we're going to do what we always do. We're going to work for 20 minutes. And then we are going to, I'm going to invite you to ask me questions about your work and your creative process. While we don't actually have the, the time or the bandwidth to have you read from your work and all that kind of stuff, uh, we, we do uh, have plenty of time to talk about your process, how you're doing with your work, uh, what you're up to, uh, you know, any, any specific process questions or check-ins, if you like. Um, and if you have a question or something that you need to share, uh, Zoe, could you tell us how to get in touch, please? Yes. When our 20 minutes is over and you have a question you would like to ask, please use the raise your hand function and the zoom on your the bottom of the screen. And I will ask you to please unmute yourself and you will ask your question. And once you're done asking your question, please mute back. And that way we can have a nice queue of questions and everyone should get their time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It's Monday. That's why we're laughing. Yeah. So uh, it's Monday. So let's get going. Here we go.
That was 20 minutes. That was 20 minutes. Um, so if anybody, now we're for the, the rest of the hour, which is about 40 minutes, we, I will take your questions. If you have any, or I can just look at my highlighters. Please use the raise your hand function if you may, and we can call on you to unmute. Thank you. Yes, Jonathan, please unmute and ask your question. Thank you. Hey, Jonathan. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Oh, I'm well. Thanks for joining. Thank you. I'm, first, I'm going to try to lower my hand. Oh, I did that. Okay. Hey. That's all. I was just seeing if I could raise and lower my hand. That's my... No, I, I had a question about about um, revisions and kind of uh, what your thoughts are on that process. Like um, when you get to a, a first draft that you're, let's say, reasonably, reasonably happy with, right? Is it the kind of thing where you uh, like step away from it and come back to it? Or do you give it to a trusted friend or partner? Or do you try to get it in front of some actors? Uh, what, what, is that, what does that process look like? I've, I've tried different approaches over the years and I don't think I've landed in a really reliable place. So I'm curious as to what you and, and what other folks do oh. in terms of- well, well, I'm first, sorry. First I'm sorry. Go ahead. First, first draft, you've got a, a draft that you're reasonably happy with. <laughs> um, congratulations, by the way. That's no small thing because while you were writing your draft, as I said today in class, the rest of us are just hanging out doing our thing. So you were doing the work and, and we we celebrate you for that. Um, right. And yeah, no, it's 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 always good to remember to like, you know, give yourself a pat on the back sometimes. So now, yeah, now what? And it seems like you tried a couple of some things. You've you've tried giving it to actors, yes. You've tried giving it to a, a trusted partner or friend, um, and getting and and getting their feedback, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Good. Um, so, w w just I mean, you don't have to name names or anything, but which one of those was less pleasing or successful or helpful? I think the, let me answer the question I want to be asked. Uh, I think the most helpful, I think the most helpful was was uh, getting it in front of actors. Um, but that's, that takes the most, um, that takes the most work and the most logistics and the most arranging. And so, um, and it may just be in the past, you know, luck. And so I, I guess the, I guess the least, Maybe I'm answering my own question. And this is your strategy. My the least helpful, I think, is just kind of going through it myself again. Because what I end up doing on when it's just me is word choice. You know, I'll shorten that up. I'll change that word, but I don't necessarily structurally look at things, or I don't necessarily, you know, get into the characters too. Because I because I've gotten to this point on my own and if anything's going to make me look at it in a radical way it's got to be somebody or something else kind of inhabiting it or, or giving like I, I can't do it myself i guess is my point right 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 well what's great um jonathan is you 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 you're you're on to your i mean you're you understand that there's some complexities involved in each stage so i i would would encourage you they're all good as you know they're all good so I would say step one is still reading it yourself. Have you, do you, do you read it aloud when you read it? Sometimes. Okay. Yeah, sometimes. You, can, you, you can do it in small increments. Like if it's a, say if it's a 150 page play uh, a, 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 consisting of 15 scenes, let's just say you mm -hmm. can, do, you can read a scene a day mm -hmm. out loud. You want to see how it sounds out loud. That's something. I mean, this yeah. is this is what I'm saying. This is building up to inviting actors in. But yeah. I think to make best use of those actors, and you said logistics are a concern, you know, everybody's schedules, you're going to want to do as much work as you can mm -hmm. before you invite the actors in, right? Yeah. And so what you're going to have to do, and I think you're probably good at this because you have written a play, you're good at pretending you're somebody else. <laughs> 
right? And okay. that's still, and you've touched on it. You said, you know, I'm not, you know, I, I need somebody else to read. That's the skill that we need to employ when we read our draft. Mm -hmm. So when I read my draft, I'm not SLP, I'm whatever, PLS or whatever. You know what I mean? I'm somebody else. Yeah. I'm reading it as if somebody else wrote it. Mm. Okay. And so I'm not, I'm, I'm not looking at it like, yeah, I think I'll change that comma, you know, that sort of close work. I'm sort of going, okay, what, what's this scene about? You know, what's, you know, mm -hmm. I'm reading it as if someone else wrote it. And I read it out loud with a lot of gusto and a lot of enthusiasm, but as if somebody else wrote it. How much time goes by before you go, go back to it? Like a week? Yeah. Yeah. It could be a week. Okay. Yeah, that's good. You, you, you I mean, I, I think it's it's nice to put it aside like a pie, as if it's were a pie, you know, like a pie, like a pumpkin yeah, pie. Yeah, yeah. I, you let it cool down. You know what I mean? So I would say put it aside for a week, then read it out loud, a scene a day, or a scene, and then take a break, and then an, another scene, and then take it, and just read, you know, read it as if someone else wrote it. You can also have your, you can do two, two for one. Have your trusted friend or partner listening. Mm -hmm. And read it out. That's what I do a lot. My poor husband, he's heard my new play. Like he said, I've heard it a hundred times, you know, <laughs> poor thing. But, you know, he's up for it. And um, I read it out loud to him. And sometimes he, I give him a screen shot to follow along, you know. Mm -hmm. And I read it out loud. And only after I've read it a few times and worked on it, do I then invite actors in. Mm -hmm. Because, like you said, of the logistics. Yeah. You know, Amrita, yeah. you have something to add for that? Because you do a lot of you know, new play development. Let's see. What do you think? I, I think what you said, SLP, is, is great. And and hi, hi, Jonathan. Nice to meet you. Um, I, I love the process of what it means to, to read out loud or read to others. Uh, I will even say also, as someone who reads many scripts on the daily, I, I love reading out loud to get to know a play and to be able to really feel character and to feel journey of story. So I think that's a great exploration because I feel like one's one's voice out loud can help you connect to how a play will feel and be heard and will i think allow a great foundation for the work before actors are fully invited in to the room so i find that to be an incredibly helpful practice in rewriting and admittedly as someone who you know gets to know a play often an incredibly helpful practice when i am trying to learn about the rhythm and the character and the tone and style and the energy of a play yeah. Great. Thank you. That's that's super helpful. Yeah, and it's it's also it, it's very empowering, mm -hmm. and it's very mm -hmm. like you're owning your work. You know, there you yeah. are. You're able to read it out loud. Sure, you're you're not an actor, or, or or perhaps you are, but you're you know maybe you're not hoping to be cast in the role, but you can stand there and deliver it. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a great confidence that happens mm -hmm. that like I can stand up in front of my spouse or my partner and read this play you know there's there's a there's a wonderful feeling that happens that you you start to feel good about the work that you've done mm -hmm. and that helps you know as you go forward yeah Great. absolutely Thank you. something else i'll also share in case in case this is helpful jonathan is uh and this happened pretty often when I was at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival because we were, you know, we were in Ashland, Oregon, and we had a company that was, um, you know, a very tightly knit company. Uh, when we didn't have the logistics to be able to plan out a reading right away, but we had someone within the company who wanted to write and hear it, you know, they would gather some friends and invite them over for dinner and say, you know, hey, I'll. I'll provide a meal if you if you sit around at a table and read the play out loud and give me some feedback and and I actually find you know I I always love the formality of readings that can support people getting paid and a company supporting it. But there's also something really nice about sometimes just like taking that out of it and being like, who can I invite over who I trust and love and I can you know I can feed them and then we can all engage in the hearing of my play. That's yeah, that's great. I think that, you know, because what I found sometimes is that depending on who the actors are, like the actors can, the actors can, because the actors are so talented and because they're, they do this all the time, they can, with their 
skill like gloss over areas that actually need work but someone who's just a regular person just reading it not bringing any of those tricks of the trade if there's a dead spot like they won't be able to cover it with their voice or with their intonation or anything like that it'll just it'll feel like the dead spot that it is but please jonathan listen to those tests <laughs> oh yeah no no that's right that's why oh. i'm saying like that's why it's maybe better to have just your friends rather than actors because the friends won't have those covering skills. I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That is true. Yeah, because a great actor, man, they can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not that. Those are. It's. It sounds like you're going to have a wonderful time. You can also, in the week that you spend reading it to your partner, you can also be calling up friends, like Amritha suggested, and and organizing that too. You don't have to do one, finish it, then do the next thing. You can. Yeah. You, organize several things simultaneously. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Again, congratulations on finishing a draft. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yes, Crystal. Hey, Crystal. How you doing? How's your shoulder? Uh, I'm, I'm broken in all sorts of senses. <laughs> it's healing. It's healing. But other things are in pain and in need of attention oh, oh. but i am healthy in all sorts of other ways so i feel good um oh. thanks <laughs> um i wanted to update you on um th the play that i started working on that um that really you know um isn't really working with my um I reached out to my friend, my 80 something year old friend, and oh. asked him um if he would want to like uh collaborate or something. And and he was like, but I don't I don't see what you see. Oh. <laughs> I'm I'm me, but I don't see you see something that like I'm just being me. So I don't know how I could I could help. And so that was one thing. But he also said another thing that I realized I'm like, oh, this is why I feel like what I'm writing isn't uh, acceptable in my site. Um, because uh, one of the things he was asking me about was he was saying, let's sit and talk about like what what your intention is with the story. Like, what's the story? And I kind of don't have a story. I just have a character and I have like a theme and the theme is you know um the purpose of life versus ageism mm. so we have this purpose in life we we all believe we have this thing we're supposed to do with our lives but who says when that is at what age that is right like sometimes we are called to do things in our 60s or 70s but like in our society sometimes that's either ignored or frowned upon mm -hmm. and so that's why i wanted to work with this character who is literally saving lives but you know he's he's just much older um so i'm having trouble now uh navigating like a plot i have a theme i have an actor i mean a, a character and i and i have a you know a, a another character like a couple of other characters but i feel like i've i've lost my way because i haven't set out the map of where i want to go i don't i don't really know where i want to go i just know what what the internal conflicts are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, right no 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 so it's 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 geometry maybe I, i've said this I, I know i've said this here before maybe but maybe not this year <laughs> Oh, this I heard this weird sound. Um, I think it was my paper. Sorry. Okay, well, <laughs> it's, it's geometry. It's time for a geometry lesson. Um, in geometry, uh, there's a there's a a tr truth. Maybe it's called two points make a line, right? Two points make a line. Okay, uh -huh. so where you where so it also works in 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 you know playwriting. Um, don't ask me why. Where is he? Where is your character now? Right? 
where is he? Like, I mean, not where is he physically, but where does he begin? And where would you like him to end up? And that understanding of where he wants to go can create a line of dialogue or more than one line of dialogue, hopefully enough lines of dialogue to create a whole play, right? So as in geometry, so in playwriting. So mm -hmm. think of what your character wants. What does he want? Um, theme is tricky in my experience. Theme is like a, you know, it's like a, a thing that scholars will write about when they write about your brilliant work. You know, uh, just, per, just personally, and this is my own experience. I've never written from theme, not yet. Mm -hmm. I don't understand really what theme is. I mean, I, I kind of do, but between you and me and everybody else listening, not really. <laughs> Themes like people in the newspaper or the New Yorker talk about, I don't know what that is, but I know what story is and I know what a character wants. What is your person, your, your uh, character? What do they want? What are they longing for? Right? Yeah. What are they, why are they standing around talking? You know, even the person on the street, you know, Dachlos, the, the, the homeless person, you know, they're standing there on the street, like talking. They want something, you know what I'm saying? Think of every character, think of Hamlet. You know, they want something. All these characters in these in these plays that we love, in novels, in movies, they want something. Okay, I, I don't know the theme of Hamlet, but I know what he wants. And longing, desire, is the fuel for plot. Mm. Plot, if you just think of it as plot, think of it. It's where dead people lie. You don't, want to be, you don't want your characters to be dead and you don't want them to be liars. So think of what they want, what they long for, what they're reaching for. Ah, I want it. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Think about that and energize your character toward his goal. Okay. For example, is he trying to prove to us that he is still someone who can do stuff? For example. Right. And so then what's that manifest? What is he doing to prove to me someone who looks at him and says, ah, he's 80. Broom him off the stage, you know? No, no, no. He's got something to tell me, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Is that helpful? Mm-hmm. Very. Very, very. And yeah. if, if you, when you get, you know, you, you, in this situation, not in all situations, but oftentimes, and it's okay because you're hurt. So don't do this. Which, uh, which shoulder is it? This one? The right one. Yeah. This one. Yeah. <laughs> right. so don't do it with that hand. Don't do it with that arm. But reach, reach, yeah. feel your body longing for something. You see what I mean? Don't crawl up into your head and start talking to me about fame. Theme, shmeem, whatever. Right. Okay, save theme for later when you're, you know, I, I'm I'm not sure who needs to hear that, but theme, the press release, I suppose. Yeah. But they'll write it for you. The press department will write it for you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Always. You're you're such a joy, Crystal. Oh, thank Is you. Your kid, what are they? Did they apply to that college in California? Um, not yet. She 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 missed the early decisions deadline, so she's going in for regular decisions. But we're checking out Howard and some other colleges too. So Howard, yeah, yeah. And he's post. Yeah, at least it's like you know a few hours as opposed to like across the country, but. Yeah. I, she she has to go on her journey, so we have to, mm -hmm. you know, let mm -hmm. her fly. Mm -hmm. True that. <laughs> Hear that. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Lists. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have a question. I, I hope you understand it. I'm just curious. Um, who do you have check your things when you first write something? Who do you have check it to see if it's spelled right? If it's and yeah, I know about getting it checked with the programs or in the computer, but to get it checked to see if it's spelled right, the punctuation's right, 
and if it makes sense, more so than is this a good story that will sell? Right. I write a lot of different things, and then I have to always remind myself, even with an email, to go back and make sure I left that L in there, you know, that I left that S in there. Um, and I do that, but I've been thinking lately that it would be good to have somebody else go over the things, um, like them advertising a program before I send it off. So I'm just kind of curious. If you yeah. Know. That, that's a great question. Who do we have? Who do I have to 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 check my work? Um, again, like w with Jonathan's question, I'm the first. I do the first check, and the second and the third check. I mean, I and usually what I do is I I learn this in like in in grade school. I read it backwards. Oh, that helps because okay. I'm not then seduced by whatever it is that I'm saying. Oh, thank you very much for sending me your blah, blah, blah. You know, <laughs> if it's an email, I'm, I'm, re so I'm reading it backwards very slowly. That helps catch any mistakes. So uh, wait a second, let me just interrupt you. So are you saying that you might read the last paragraph first? Is that what you're And backwards, starting from the bottom of the page. Okay. Like backwards. Okay. So, it does, so I'm not seduced by the sense of it. Okay. I'm more checking the spelling, okay. the, the punctuation, anything like that. So I do that two or three times. And then I might read it forward again just to make sure that I'm saying something. Mm -hmm. And then I would hand it off again to my 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 husband, who, who is the hardest working man who's not in, in our show business anyway. I give it to him. Let him read it. And then, you know, I, I uh, then I just say, well, I've invented so many words and punctuations at this point that I hope people let cut me some slack. Um, spelling isn't what it, you know, spelling is very important. It's not as it was years ago, the judge, the the, the way to measure intelligence. Um, so hopefully people cut you some slack. And there are all those wonderful programs that are going to let you see where you made a little mistake. So. That's helpful. That's helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. Yes, Sasha is on mute. Hey, Sasha. And I'm just doing these eye exercises anyway. <laughs> hey, Sasha, what's happening? ISLP. Um, thank you so much. You just I I enjoy this so much. I learn so much every time. And uh, it just, you are just like unbounded generosity. And it's, the vibes are immaculate. And um, thank you so much. So I just wanted to say that uh, in case I don't get a chance another time. But um, my question is, um, I guess, how, how you know when something's working? Like, do you have anything that like, any kind of touch points that you're like, that you kind of know about ahead of time or any kind of feeling or sensation or something like in your process? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I, I do. It's interesting. Um, I was reading something uh, just yesterday, which is talking about writer's block and how, you know, some people say it's not real. Some people say it is. And some writers know when they're in their groove and some don't. So it's, it's good to develop and continue, continue to develop the ability to know when you're in the groove, right? When you're in your own groove, and it's different for everybody. Um, if you can read your work and feel like it's moving along, right? That's a good indication. If you can feel your work, uh, if you read your work and feel like that, that's, that paragraph is moving along. Oh, that's boring. I'm bored right now. I would just circle it. That you might've jumped out of the groove. You know, or, oh, wow, I'm trying to show the audience how smart I am, whether it's a play or a novel or a song or a whatever. I went to that chord because, see, I'm playing that chord in the song. Look how good I am. That's usually an indication that you're out of the groove, right? You're trying to impress the audience. Um, so th those are those are things that I usually use. It's It's a feeling that you develop over time, and it is helped by feedback you get from uh again your your first reader outside yourself actors or or readers that you would involve in your process um and I, I tend to rely though more on my what i think it should be rather than other people 
because uh, sometimes, like Jonathan was saying, like if you get great actors and they read it and it's, oh man, they love it because it's all about, you know, uh, you know, but it was skiing and we, they love skiing and it's amazing because it's about skiing and they just go off like that and they're so generous and kind and loving and you know that there are more holes in it than, you know, you know, it's just not hitting it. So it's, it's, it's a development of an understanding about your own work. Um, do you, do you know, do you, can you read something at this point and go, mm, that's not it yet. Can you do that with your own work? Um, I definitely have more of like a throwing a lot of stuff against the wall and like some of it, you know, I can tell it doesn't stick for like a long time. You know, I'm older now. Um, I couldn't finish anything when I was younger because I was just like, this is all trash. And all of a sudden, now that I'm older, I'm like, I kind of only start when I feel something. Huh? Um, and so then I kind of work until uh, I try to finish it. But uh, I try not to go down those paths anymore that I'm like, like you're talking about like external motivation, I guess, or validation or. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You want, you want to feel you, or ha have you ever like um, gone on a date? <laughs> nice. I know, I, know I, I look like someone who has never done that, but no, I no, 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 I, I, I'm no, sorry. I know I'm kidding. I, I'm oh. kidding. I didn't take it that way. Okay. Or, or, or like, had a great conversation with somebody and you're like vibing yeah you're like vibe, you know you're vibing or you hang out with some friends and it feels good you know a group of friends like yeah hey this is my tribe that feeling yeah you're not really thinking you're just kind of there and yeah you're there's a connection yeah. it's deeper than just some surface shit yeah it, it's dropped that's the feeling you want to have with your work yeah. Like, yeah, like you dropped below the level of surface into something like an underground stream. Almost. Mm. Mm. Yeah. No? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the second part of what you said kind of made me think of this other question I haven't ever asked, but it's been on my mind a couple of times with other people's questions. It's just like, and I like what you said so much about like, you want to kind of please yourself because I worry about stuff like with asking other people, like I'm very ca cautious now because of past experiences where it's like, like, I don't, I don't want like, <laughs> like maybe they're going to come from a place of like patriarchy or like, what if like, they're going to come from a place of, you know, whatever other bullshit, you know what I mean? So it's like, it, you have to be careful sometimes I feel like to, to protect your work from that and, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe you have some like a something you could say about that. Mm, uh, it it ha it happens. I just I, I it it um. Pe there are a lot of wonderful people out there who will give you good positive, you know, good feedback, helpful feedback, constructive feedback, helping you edit, revise all those good things that you need, encourage you to keep going forward. And there are a lot of people who are who are haters. Mm -hmm. They're out there. They're out there. It's unfortunate. And I would say, that's why I say, read your work, feel good about your work before you send it out. Be mindful of who you, you know, there's that movie, there's an American version, but the better version is the original version. I think it was made in Sweden. It's called let the right one in. It's about vampires. Anyway, nah, this is weird. Let the right one in. You got to let the right one in. You got to check this movie out. It, the American one is meh. The, the original one is like fire. It's all about the vampires, the little vampires. Anyway, the idea is that you let the right people into your circle. Be very mindful of who you're letting in, who you're listening to, who you're, you might not be able to control who you, who gives you notes, because if you work in, uh, in art, you're working for a theater, maybe there are lots of people who give you notes and they're allowed to, but you're allowed, you are allowed to, to take certain notes and to very politely not take all the notes. You know what I mean? So just be very mindful, get your people who love you around you, who love you more than they love to see their notes in your work. Mm -hmm. and awesome. just know that people that 
I mean, I, I, you know, people have told just as as late as nah, last year, people said some shit to me, like yelled at me for shit in theater. So you know, they're out there. Let me at them. Yeah, yeah. I, I took care of them. That is cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Back the best way anytime. Yeah, thank you. The best way we can take care of those people, those haters, is to keep working because their desire, because they feel shitty about something that don't have nothing to do with you, their desire is to shut you down. Mm-hmm. And the best way we can we can win, if you will, is to keep going. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, I've been writing plays for <gasps> 40 years. And I've had all kinds of people tell me all kinds of stupid shit, you know. And I just, I just want you to know that you just got to keep going. You have to keep going. So, and keep writing, keep finishing your work, keep finding communities that will, that will be supportive, not like supportive, like everything you do is great. It's not T-ball. We're not in, you know, second grade over here, right? We can take a a strong critique. Okay. We want to get better. We want to be amazing. We want to develop as artists. Okay. Yeah. Um, So. But just keep finishing your work. I think it's great that you're at the point in your in your artistic development when you can finish your work because that's when you're going to know what it's really about. Finish it, rewrite it. Yeah, surround yourself with people who who care about you. Thank you so much. Thank you, and keep coming back here because we love you. Yeah, me too. Who wants to be next? There's six minutes left. No, or I have two highlighters. I'm doing Irish. It's really good stuff. You know, you just kind of move your eyes back and forth and it strengthens your eyes because your eyes are just your brain, the part of your brain that's outside your head. <laughs> I, I, I'd like to ask something, but I always forget how to raise my hand on this. So oh. if no one else is going to ask a question, I'm going to ask a question. I'm hey. having- oh. Hi. Um, thank you so much. I'm in cahoots with everyone else. It's just so, it's so inspiring to be here. And I was having such a lousy day this morning, like just really feeling like I wanted to give up on everything. And I just get in here and I'm like, okay, I can do it. Um, I'm having a really hard time because of the war and like, like I'm, I, last time I was on here, I was talking about producing my play and right now I'm trying to raise money and I'm like, it's really hard to ask for anything right now. And I'm just really struggling. And I just feel like, I mean, this is a question for my therapist, but I'm like, as artists, you know, when something like this is going on, it's like, how do we continue on and, and feel okay? Like still doing our own thing when all this stuff is happening that like, we're so powerless over, you know? Um, It's just been a really hard day. So I just feel like, and I, as artists, I know we all struggle with this. So, um, but it's just really affecting me. And I I think, um, and like, I'm in the middle of trying to raise, yeah, like I'm in the middle of trying to raise money and like, I have to ask people for money and like, this is going on. It's just weird. I still really don't know like how to like reset my mind and make it like, so that it's, I'm, I'm, I'm productive and still helping with my art, you know, like, I don't know if this is a question. I mean, I guess I'm trying to ask a question, but I'm. I, I, I if I can jump in, let me, Linda, I, I really appreciate what, what I am receiving as, as a question. Like, how do we keep going when there's just things going on in the world? And when you say the war, you know, bless your heart. I was like, which one? Which one? No, right. and I, I, I feel you. And, and there are a couple of things that, that I do, you know, I mean, and again, my thing isn't your thing, you know, but we all have a common thing because we're all human beings. Um, I work to focus on the things I can do something about. You know what I mean? I, the things I can do something about and know, I know, or I believe, I really have the faith that doing what I can do is going to help the things I don't have power over. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and if it feels weird to ask for money right now for to do a play, you can put that on pause. It doesn't mean that you've abandoned the notion of getting your play done. Yeah. Just put it on on pause and you know, reaching out, I mean, reaching out to, to larger things. I, I do that a lot too. And it's, it's going to sound weird, but reaching, I mean, community is important like this community. Um, higher power is a community, you know, and I'm not, I'm not saying thoughts and prayers. What I am saying is the recognition that, uh, that there is a, a a clarity of of mind that happens when you go above your own cloud cover, yeah. and there there is a, there's an there's an opportunity for um, a new way of seeing things when you get above your own cloud cover. Do you do you see what I mean? And that can help you. That can help us get through the day. And that's all we're trying to do: just get through the day. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah. I feel like I'm supposed to be writing about what's happening. And it's like, for me, it's like my play is just about something silly. You know, it's like, it's totally bizarre. And so it's like, it's a little bit of a mind fuck where I'm like, well, shouldn't I be trying to save the world? Like, I'm just doing some silly play. That's how I feel. And I, sh I need to get out oh, of my mind. Yeah, but you you know, you, the world, there, there, there are a gazillion ways to save the world. And we're all, if we're all of us doing our work is part of that. Yeah. You know, that, that, because that's what we do. I mean, doing your work helps save the world. <laughs> People are putting stuff in chat. Thank you guys so much. I know we're at the end and I appreciate it. I appreciate your question. We all appreciate your question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, I got a, uh, what the watchman work the suggestion for your digestion the watchman work tip of the week of course today is vote people i got my vote in new york because i live in new york city i voted early because i don't like to stand in line but uh but those of you who haven't yet vote uh vote like your life depends on it because guess what it does um and you can say oh this isn't a big election now i'm gonna wait till next year get in the habit of, of of voting okay so so vote tomorrow if you haven't already um and we are at six o'clock and we are it's it's uh the the observation of veterans day next week is that correct zoe or Amrita? we are meeting next week i'm sorry i didn't hear you we are meeting next week we are meeting next week fantabulous okie dokie we okay. are meeting next week, and we are also meeting on the 27th, but we are not meeting on the 20th. Okay. All righty, all righty. All right. Well, thank you very much. Have a wonderful week. See you soon. Be well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.